Ay, the tide still flows and the wind still blows And it's time for us to leave her Was a magic fog upon the sea Leave her, Johnny, leave her It obscured both friend and enemy Now it's time for us to leave her Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her Ay, the tide still flows and the wind still blows And it's time for us to leave her and the Grendel came with the rising sun. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. They outnumbered us near three to one. And it's time for us to leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. Ay, the tide still flows and, and the wind still blows And it's time for us to leave her So with fire and sword we forged ahead Leave her, Johnny, leave her Leaving naught but wrecks and bloody dead And now it's time for us to leave her Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her Ay, the tide still flows and the wind still blows And it's time for us to leave her Near a hundred ships were lost that day Leave her, Johnny, leave her In our defeat at Catazar Bay And it's time for us to leave her Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another stream. Um, this time we are going to be chatting with the um, the crayon face murder monkeys, I think is the best way to describe them. They... Slander. I'm going to disagree with that. Slander! Slander. 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 The incorrect term. Rosemary, all yours. <laughs> the awesome, awesomeness. Beat him. Beat him with sticks. The awesomeness that is the Navarre. So, um, we, I think, everyone here, everyone in this, on this stream that has been playing Navarre, uh, Justin has had multiple characters in the Navarre. <laughs> uh, Rosemary, point you, one to point six in Navarre. There we go. Rosemary, you've been playing um, Aliri for ever. Whole run of Empire, yes. Yeah, you, forever. Chris, you're on th third? Was it uh, second Navar? Second character. Second, second character. Uh, one, one, first Navar character, second Empire wide. Excellent. The other was that funny fellow in the glass post, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so and yeah, so and technically for me, uh, I got well executed, and I'm yeah. now in Wintermark. So doing well, doing well. So this was uh, this was a stream that was. Uh, we put to a poll in the Empire LARP group, and um, here we are. So, oh, I didn't actually, I didn't actually advertise this in the Empire LARP group. I forgot to do that. Oh well, never mind. Go do, do it now. Go do it now. <coughs> oh, no, it means doing stuff. What well, that means? Copying and pasting a ULR. Yes, hard. I know, but uh, I haven't got two screens, so it means that everyone would see what I'm doing, and it's it's not <laughs> great. No, no one needs I mean, to. Maybe, no one maybe, needs maybe to see somebody it. else could do it. Yeah, so maybe if someone else can go and do it. Cheers, Scott. Right, Thank okay. you for that. So, the Navarre. Navarre have a have a nice um, a nice setup in that wood. They've done incredibly well. From as I think we I think we were all at they've been playing Empire from the beginning, apart from you, Justin. So how would you, how would you describe the woods then? Um, I think this is a good place to start because the Navarre. Are, the Navarre and the Orcs really are the only ones who have had, have access to that fantastic prop that are mm. trees. So, how would you describe the growth of the Navarre as a nation then, from 
E1, year one, or year one, E1, however you want to put it, to where we are now. So I have to go with Chris with this one because I just remembered right, that you camp out in the field. You're the field. You're in charge of the field lot. <laughs> so Chris, it's all yours. <laughs> I'm in charge. I'm say, I've only got like three or four years of it, so there's not much I can say. I can I can pretty much follow our growth from when we hit. What are we on now? Is it Derby Road now? Where's our campsite? It's been that long. Bedford Road, Justin. Yeah, just outside of Silverstone, obviously. Because I remember, because yeah, I was there for Thermal and I was there for Silverstone, but I wasn't there for Tournament Stud. Were you there for Tournament Stud, mm -hmm. Rosemary? I have yeah. played every Thanks Empire well. event. Yeah. Is that, well, what, what were they like? Because I completely missed Tournament Stud, as Maelstrom wasn't my game. So I actually really liked the woods there because they were more open. There wasn't like the one gate and the boundary. You could just walk in between trees. And although we were maybe, we argued quite a lot about how good it was to have the woods or not, it was, there was less of a boundary. There was less of a, ah, this is the Navarre camp now, only in the woods and nowhere else that we do have a bit of trouble with these days. We really need to put up signposts to remind people where the rest of it is. It is, or they could, you know, just see it. You walk. I think it probably helps that we're right next to the lead now, because you can absolutely tell the difference between someone in hose and someone, you know, in brown and green. Yeah, we used to get asked a lot, "Are you the marches?" And like, look at these tattoos. We are not the marches. <laughs> Better than being asked if we're Wintermark. I, I got asked that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in all fairness, I still get asked if I'm the bar, but my kit hasn't changed at all, really. So. It just um, always made me wonder why, why do why does Wintermark have shit on their face? That's our thing. Well, mine are meant to be tattoos, so it's um. And you still haven't got that cheese grater yet. No, no, we haven't. But, <laughs> <laughs> but back to your question. So, how have we seen the nation grow over the over the? Site? Yeah. So I, I suppose to say then it would be best for um for Dadford. So this campsite then. So because when we were in the trees beforehand, there were a lot more trees, and there was a bit more spaced out but now they've taken all half the trees away and we're yes. it's a little bit more open but i think it's safe to say that i think the woods look a lot better now i i disagree i, I love yeah? them when they were when there were more trees all over the place and it and there was more undergrowth i i felt that it gave it a real a real ethereal atmosphere because you'd wander in there and it would just be green everywhere there'd be fronds coming down There'd be fronds coming down. There'd be ferns along the path, which would have to be cut back and stamped back. It, it yeah. felt like you'd stepped from the world, from the field of Anvil, which is all you know, bell tents and the odd wooden building and mud, into into this complete different place where strange tattooed people will smile at you and try to sell you alcohol. Excellent. So I'm. Um, I, I've realised I've uh, I haven't done something that I've done on every other stream, and I haven't done it on this one. So everyone knows who I am. If we go around from we go uh, actually we'll go for Rosemary, Justin, Chris. If we can introduce ourselves, will we play? Tell us a little bit about um, ourselves, our character, and so everyone can see that because I forgot I hadn't done that. Sorry. Can I go last? I just want to grab a drink. I've been put on the spot now. Um, I'm Rosemary. I've been playing Alary Bromwyn's Rest, who is a brand, an innkeeper, and a nosy person since the start of Empire. Um, I am known for costume stuff. Uh, I think that's about it. Let's. It's your turn. Go on, in, Chris. Um, Andrews, I play Brat Umble Path. I am a guide of ambition and a vate of night, and this is my second character, as I said, so I joined into Navarre about four, three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. Sarcastic rituals, don't forget those. Master of sarcastic rituals <laughs> is occasionally confused as the Archmage of Night, which I'm not. It's a decoy. Excellent. Hi, I'm Justin. I currently play the Kellyock Two Feet. I've played a member of the Two Feet Striding since I joined this game. Most people look at me and go, hey, that's Kiartan, but that's an entirely different story. I've done the fighting game pretty much since the word go. I've been a form. I'm currently a guide and a physic and one of the vines, which is pretty ace. So I heal and I hit things and I'm an overall meddling priest nowadays. Yeah. Okay. Just break. 
excellent stuff. I'm 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 not going to bother introducing myself because I think everyone knows who I am. Yeah. You no. smell. I I do smell really bad. Um, you can probably smell me through the uh, the screen, to be honest. I can. Um, so we've had um so um we've got Matt Daweswood in chat as well, and he is our like our our linker extraordinaire. Um, so he anything that we need, and he's all he's on the ball. So I, I don't even need to say it really. So uh, he's just said that winter mark also camp in the woods a little bit now. So. Um, not too much. So, um, excellent. So, um, Fowl, straight on it with a question there. He asks loads, which is good. Uh, is there any part of the Navarre look and feel brief you feel is misrepresented or not given enough love? I only go for Rosemary on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know I have this this axe to grind but i'm gonna grind it again weathering your kit does not mean having shit kit it does not mean not hemming your kit it means making it look like your kit is several years old if you are striding in a remote forest where you're not gonna see another human being for the next week you do not want your trousers to fall apart therefore you will mend them okay i'm done now i've said my piece <laughs> So um, I, I want to I want to add this um, about Rosemary because Rosemary has done a fantastic thing, um, not just for the Navarre but for Empire in general. Because you arranged the, um, the free cycle, I think is the best way to describe it, where people turn up with little bits of kit and you can swap it out and stuff like that. So, so Rosemary's done fan is fantastic. That if you have any questions about Navarre kit. Then um, for everyone else, that which is over that side, but for me, she's right below me. So, and that's the one that. So she, so seek out Rosemary and ask any question. And she is a font of all knowledge. Really, really good. So, um, so, so we've had uh, there's uh, someone in chat. Uh, oh yeah, also the field camp banner. We ignore the one in the woods <laughs> because he doesn't really do much. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Kit. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, we've got he, he quite does. a lot of people he, here. He really does. He deserves the scorn. <laughs> he deserves, always, always. He knows what he's done. <laughs> so there's, poor um, I think poor you... Kit. Poor Kit. You've got um, Sapphire Huntress as well. Um, she is coming along to the Navarre for... It'll be her first event next time, I believe. She's actually joining the two feet. So yes, Ooh. yes she is. So this is good. Um, uh, Mac I left. Who she is. You will do, but we'll, we'll talk that later. Okay. Um, uh, Mac left the Navarre to join the footballers. Apparently, yep, we've done well. Um, so Mac Dawes, we'll get back to the, we'll get back to the Empire now. Um, Mac Dawes, uh, if there are any myths you could dispel about the Navarre, what would they be, Chris? Um. I think the fact that we're all knife wielding murder monkeys. Um, Navarre, when you actually read the brief and should be, is the fact that we are actually quite law abiding. We're practical and we all understand that laws need to be broken sometimes. It's not something that we go out to do day by day to help create the laws in the Empire. We used to, as a guide, I used to go around and do judgments and help people. Uh, before the empire so we actually got laws understand the importance of it because otherwise we're no better than the druge okay what are you justin anything to add let's see any myths about us that must be dispelled well obviously there's the murder one murder alley completely ineptly aimed there have been named there have been what three murders there and i think we were responsible for one of them mm -hmm. i said that out loud didn't i uh, <laughs> beyond that, beyond um, that, I don't know whether there are any major myths. Well, there's the fact that people seem to think that we're horribly unfriendly, and that I think it doesn't help that we're right next to the, next to the orc camp. But mm. we're like the orc camp, but we're completely against outsiders and are this dangerous bunch of sociopaths in the wood. But we're really not. Oh, I even wrote a song about it. Mm. I, I think. Um... So, Rosemary, have you got anything to add to that one? I think, yeah, pretty much that they think we don't know how to switch off what we do on the battlefield. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> okay. There's that two sides to every Navarre. There's the stabby little shit and 
as the friendly social person yeah. and each navar has one or the other to a greater or lesser extent but i think we do all have both sides yeah yeah i'd, I'd agree with all of those i think i've got um, another one actually go on people don't seem to think steadings exist they look at us and they assume that we're all walking the trods 24 7 and never go home sit down or know what props are and so that's a horrible uh, that's a horrible misrepresentation of us we do both mm. both and as i've, as I've said steady, to so many sorry no 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 please go ahead Lesmo, because i know this is your other <laughs> <to guys. laughs> just a little bit the, the steadings are only there to support the stridings the stridings support the steadings just as much as the steadings support the stridings absolutely mm. they're they're symbiotic one can't exist without the other no in any way no. shape or form because mac oh. was sorry chris go for it well, the, the clear example is the fact that we have cities. Exactly. So we're not all walking. We've got cities. And as far as game, that's really coming up now. But we've got cities. So we can't all be walking around the place because we have cities. Exactly. Um, that's yeah. how I've described it. How I've described it to one person is we used to be a civilization of sophisticated urbanites who then had our civilization burned down around our ears had yep. to become a nomadic people, but are now making the transition back to sophisticated urbanites, especially yep. in the Iran of all places. Mm. places. And it's an interesting point, but we're at that point in Empire that we are making that transition more and more. And it'd be nicer if we had less of a lawn to deal with. <laughs> it's all, I, all I was going to say is uh, Mac was uh, the two feet uh, steading. Mac was in the steading, not the striding. Mm. So, and that leads to the, uh, I think it's Kit's favourite joke, because Mac was from the Brock. So it's Mac is from the Brock. He used to have yep. a little, but now he has a rock. <laughs> anyway. <Awful>. So, <laughs> so, so we've got Next the, question. we've got the, um, the similarities there that you, you touched on with the Orcs. I think we, I like to think that uh, during the Orc chat, we dispelled a lot of, the, mis the, the preconceptions about the orcs so that was they were pretty good about they want people to come and role play with them and stuff like that i think um i think song and stories helps a lot oh yes when it comes to um socializing with the navar it, it pulls in so so many people come to to watch it and to listen to well uh, to be honest justin i think the whole of the field can hear you sing whether or not they're there or not so, is it is my superpower? <laughs> is would you say that song and story time is something that has has been good for the nation or been incredibly good for the nation? Incredibly good for the nation. I'd say that it's one of our main pulls because mm. for my first event at Empire, there were two things that kept there were two realistic things that kept me there. There was the fighting, which I realised I absolutely loved. And then there was Song and Stories. Those two things had me sold. And to be fair, Song and Stories on its own could have absolutely sold me. Um, yeah. My little brother and my little sister, Johnny and Rebecca, came along and pretty much kept coming for Songs and Stories. They weren't so enamoured with the fighting. They weren't so enamoured with the politicking. But they loved the atmosphere. And they loved that for about, well, from about 7 o'clock until 1 in the morning, they could sit mm. around the fire and they could just watch performance after performance. And... It's just done so much. It spreads so much of our culture. The culture, and it yeah. results in the drama, and it's such a lovely focal point. Point, even though it does keep people up until you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen. I've seen a question here that is. Um, it's. It's just Rosemary's question. Simple. Um, that one. <laughs> I think that's 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 got Rosemary written all over it. Um, so. Go oh, on. Um. Oh, I moved on for it now. I was trying to find another one just so I can get everyone else involved. <laughs> so, um, oh, it was, it was, it was about it, it was it was about it was about Kit. It was all about Kit. Um, so it was someone who's coming along for the first time, and I've lost the question. But it was how do you basically give them advice on their kit and making kit? That's that's a big question. Yep. Um, Air brown and green. Wear anything you can't run in. 
if you buy a pot of cheap acrylic paint, you can paint thorns and vines on pretty much any fabric. Um, we, we need to not look like winter markers. Some, somebody help me out here with how not to look like a winter marker, because that, ah. that is not my problem. Don't wear yeah. fur. Yeah. Avoid those yeah. beautiful Celtic trims. Yeah, it says... Uh, have, have, on your unit. On, it, on your tunic. Have trees Leave on everything. Leave your leg wrap at home. Stop shaving your hair to look like Ragnar. <laughs> Justin, you're interrupting. I've never found Stop that it. a problem either. Um, the, the rest of it was, uh, do you have any tips for weathering? The kit's looking a bit clean at the moment. Um, honestly, just wearing it and keep washing it. Your character might have new clothes to come to Anvil for the first time, because it is, you know, the centre of the Empire. Mm. But the kit I've been wearing for five, six years has just naturally faded. Um, if you're going to rip your clothes, rip them, then mend them again. If you can rip them in character and tell a story, like the time I climbed up the gantry to watch the Empress's coronation and rip my trousers, then you're winning. Obviously, you're Navar. You wouldn't throw away those trousers. They're still useful. Mm. But now, if somebody asks you, how do you do that? You've got a story to tell right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... Some but somebody else can be along to talk about weathering kit, because that's not really my expertise, because Aleri likes her fashion, and is always very clean and tidy. True. True. Chris, could you feel any advice for any kit or anything? Um, I think remember that, even if we're sitting in the city, we're still a people you can look pretty you can have your pretty kit think about what you wear um, for the given task so first thing in the morning we're going to go to battle mm. essentially so uh, that don't be afraid to um have outfits as such like even something simple as a robe or another top can really change what you do like it will frequently change between having uh, a leather jerkin over my other clothes, wearing a robe at night, and jewelry and small things like mm. that you can do. And then, if you really want to weather things and make it look a bit stressed, all around on rocks <laughs> or wallet or throw mud and wash it loads. It's one of those things you can do. Um, but as Rosemary says, it's not people who are wearing rags. Mm. If You've got people who are really skilled craftspeople. Um, can, so... can I show off my tunic at this point? Yeah, go for it. So I, I have brought one of my tunics. Wow. Which has leaf and flower embroidery around the neck and cuffs. I didn't do the designs, I downloaded the designs and then I used my embroidery machine. So hooray for modern technology. <laughs> but what I will say is decorate your stuff if you want to have pretty stuff because you can't carry artwork with you. You don't want to carry huge trinkets, mementos of your loved ones. Everything that is decorated should be not heavy. So I like to embroider my clothes, yeah. carved leather, um, tiny necklaces. I, I have more visual aids here. I, the, the, the person who gave Aleri this pouch is actually watching the stream, so he's going to be very happy now. Um, <laughs> who was that? Incredible. With, 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 with uh, Palace, the, <laughs> Palace the Rune of Prosperity from a, a certain Arisen Sentinel who's probably going to identify himself in the channel right now. Excellent stuff. And I'm uh, just going to wave the necklace Brad. very, very briefly. <laughs> Uh, has a wirework tree on it. Right. There so, we go. So, Justin, I, I'd like you to field this next question because I think this is quite relevant, really, to something that, something that we we've talked about a lot in the two feet. Um, okay. Do you have any favourite stories behind steading or striding names? 
Well, most of the ones I've made up. Uh, <laughs> so, I think I've got three. So, <laughs> so there's okay. So obviously, I'm biased. Uh, I think because it, it, in my particular group, one of sort of your entry requirements is that you've got to make up your own story. Because despite being about 300 years old, we really can't remember because we didn't really write it down. So everyone comes in with their own origin myth. But I love all of them. I love all of the ones I hear. I love everything that I've read on the prominent Steadings and Stridings, which was updated quite recently. I just love it. I just love seeing what's in people's imagination, like yeah, Fo like Fox Den as a perfect example. I'm probably going to butcher this because it's been a while since I've heard their story their story but while trapped out in winter they saw some foxes form a nest and that they saw some foxes form a nest and huddle together against the cold and they took inspiration from that and that's why they're called fox den and you know it's it's as simple as that like ours which is i left my half and home behind with naught but a knife on my own two feet or the two feet for sure for sure has its own huge story attached to it and there's no, I, don't, I can't say that there's a favourite out there because it's all, it's all people's creativity. It's all something that adds to the setting and that adds to the detail of the world. And if you're ever in Anvil and somebody says, hi, I am, I'm Bill Embercall, ask them why they're called Embercall because chances are they'll have something behind that. They'll, mm. There will be a story and you'll learn something. You'll make a new friend. The world will fill up and become a bit more real to you. And, that's what I love about those stories. At least so no. I couldn't pick a favourite one and quite frankly, I don't want to blow my own horn any more than I have to. So yeah, I hope that answered the question. Does anyone else have an input? But I, I will say very quickly is that um, something that I do on all of these streams because I, I, we get a lot of new players coming to watch us and they, we, we talk about uh, how to introduce itself and how to get um, ingrained. Um, I think uh, Chris was for the there for the ritual one, and um, a new player is coming to find you, I believe, in their first game to have a chat about all of that. Whether he wants it or not, they are. Uh, <laughs> and something that I will say as well is, if if you go into the Navarre and you ask who they are, and, um, and when they tell you, there is a story behind their name, and it's going to be a really good thing to ask. So I think we should probably introduce Two Feet Bingo to see how many different names for where the two feet came from um, go. So I think that could be quite an interesting one. So uh, Rosemary, how about, because you're Brom, Bromwyn's Rest, right, aren't you? Yes. So I, mm. I, I remember being looked after at Bromwyn's Rest very, very early on. So, and I think, I think someone from there repaired my trousers as well. Yeah, I've definitely fixed some trousers in the field. Hmm. See? <laughs> I'm a huge fan of your packed lunches. They're wonderful. <laughs> So, how, do you have anything to add to the to the names and the, the stories behind it all, or um, not especially? Um, Rob fine. Bromwyn's rest the, the long form. Go now, carry on. No, 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 it's fine. It's, I'll say carry on. You were going to say something. So, so uh, the long form of the steading is Bromwyn rested here after fifty years walking the trods of Perunin. She was an old thorn. She settled down to found a wayhouse in her retirement. Brilliant. Perfect. Interesting story as these things go. Yeah. So, about you, Chris? Anything to add? Can't do. Not really. Not really. Um, I, I think I should probably just ask people because, as we say, every. Every striding setting is a name for it. Like Umbral Path, please come and tell it. Ask me, what does Umbral Path actually mean? Because it'd be quite interesting. I think it's more something to you in like mm. York's going up and just wanting to do something with you at yeah. the gate to get through to go into the camp. Come up to Navarre and ask, what's your history? What's to do? Um, I think that's. It's a good way to start a conversation. I mean, not everyone will talk to you but about that, but I think it's a good yeah. opener, as everyone else said. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm, slowly, I'm scrolling down. 
Um, so I'd I be a bit concerned about that opener, to be fair, because I'd be like, do you want my history, my striding's history, my standing's history, my nation's history? Because we might be here a while. I would say we a lot. Of history. I would say yes to all of that. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I'll try to sell you some alcohol. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> that's the only reason I come home. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Matt's asked a uh, question. What's your favourite parts of the Navarre brief? Who would like to go first? Justin's muted himself, so that's fine. I have muted myself. <laughs> I, I don't mind who goes first. Because I'm going to speak. Go on in, Chris. Yeah. Chris. Um, she came into Navarre. Um, originally played Brass Coast. Um, I was actually probably going to go Varushka next. I only joined Navarre because friends were in Navarre and they asked me to come along to play their priest. Um, what I love, I think, is. It's a sense of timelessness with it. Like you got this very much set of these people are here. You got other people walking around exploring, and there's a song. Part of the lyric of a song in the Empire is "quick blood in its in its veins." Mm. That sums up Navarre to me. It's like they're the they're, they're messengers, they're the scouts, they're the people that see things and they're aware of the dangers and being one with nature is nothing like that because um, we're at war against nature effectively everywhere. Um, uh, I think it's the bit of the fact that you can literally say, "Well, I've just been traveling from here, and now I'm here, and here's the story I have to tell, or is tell me what's happening here so I can spread it around." It's probably the messenger service. I think is what really attracts me to Navarre. Mm. Cool. Rosemary. Um, I think a lot of it for me is about the history of finding out who we were, who who was the who were the the Tyrrhenial Empire, what did they do, why did they think about the Valorn, and you know, we found out a lot about that yeah. over the run of the game so far, and yet I feel we're still only scratching the surface in some <clears> places. <throat> and the costume brief didn't want me to look like an elf because I don't look like an elf. I didn't want to be, to wear a. But there were a lot of pretty dresses. I didn't mm. want to wear a pretty dress. And I really liked that Navarre clothing has no gender, pretty much. And um, we've worked a lot on the other costume briefs since then. Mm. But things eight years ago are not the same as they were now. No. Didn't no. quite make sense. Excellent, Justin. Oh, okay. Well, what I love about the brief about the brief is the sense of community and the sense of self-sacrifice in the name of that community are what really attracts me to Navarre. Yeah. Because the whole the whole core of Navarre is that we're the survivors of Tarunal and we stand together. We are bound by that. We're bound in blood. We're bound by a sacred duty to destroy the Valorn and to make amends for the sins of our past. And we're willing yeah. to sacrifice, and this shared duty, it binds us together, and our, our oaths and our archetypes are all, are all perfect examples of people who are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for that. The fawns mm -hmm. always stand ready to fight and, if need be, die for the nation. The mm -hmm. vates always stand ready to use their magic in, in support and in defense if support and defence and in the aggrandizement of the, the nation. The guides always stand ready to guide you along the great dance and the path and to bind us together. The, bo the brokers stand ready to, you know, keep our commerce going, to find the best deal, to be negotiators when, thi when things go wrong. And the brands are there to, you know, when you take a brand, you dedicate your, yourself to performing a task for your nation. You should. At that point, you've sworn an oath, the strongest oath you can, that you will do this thing for your people and your nation. And I just, I love that selflessness of it. I love, mm. I love the sacrifice involved in the game. In no other nation, I should, and well, I will happily be corrected. But in no other nation do I feel the need that if it comes to a rear guard, to say a rear guard action, that people won't step, 
step forward because as far as I'm concerned, if you're on the field and right, we need somebody to hold the line, every fawn should step forward. You wander into Navarre and there's an eternal and there's an eternal herald messing around. Every vate will step forward to help with that. If somebody's having a spiritual crisis, every guide will step forward. There'll be no, what's in it for me? Or do you know what? I'm really tired. I can't be bothered. Or ew, that mm. person's from a different territory. Why on earth should I do that? There's there's that sense of community. And that, that's what yeah. I love so much about our nation. And uh, I just haven't found it anywhere else. That's, that yeah. is... I think... Oh, mate. Um, I think that's a key thing. It's like you've got look at the other nations. Uh, they brought like, uh, like say Dawn's got the Earls and things like that, um, River Doors and stuff. But Navarre, when you look at guides, brokers, uh, Thorns, brands, aren't just well, this is who I am. To those is an oath of service to the nation. It. Yes, okay, we've put you in charge of this. We believe you're responsible, but you're in charge because you've stepped forward. You're not here for us. And I love about Navarre with the practicalness that is, I don't agree with what your brand is saying or your guide. Change your steady and you're saving striding to find the one that fits you mm. away. Um, everyone who swears a no, if it's not saying, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for the nation. I'm doing this for my family. It's that's what I also like about it. Yeah, it's a really, really good answers there, and I think the Navarre as a whole are. I, I I think every nation has its own way of being welcoming and and bringing everyone on board, um, and that and people will find that within different nations they don't feel that. So that's obviously not the nation for for them. As a as a person, as a player, um, I mean, my own example would be Max started off in Urizen, and that was not a good start for me as a as that I did not enjoy it. It's Urizen is not for me, and I'll be very open and honest about that. But for the people who it is for, it's fantastic. So I then I then was lucky enough to have Dave uh, as Egregore, and he was an immediate yeah. You're definitely one of us. And that was it, and it was it was wonderful. And the Navarre will always welcome people in. Um, and I can name a lot of other, um, will there be issues involved where the Navarre have gone, we're dealing with this issue, and we're going to go and deal with it now. And it's done, and people are brought into the fold, and it's very safe and friendly, and it's and it's really really good. So, um, I, yeah, that's the fantastic responses there. So thank you. Um, Fowl's asked uh, a nice question about the half magic. Uh, how do you think the new changes to the half magic will improve your nation? Anyone? I think Brandon um, is going to be really cool. I look forward to seeing lots of people with, you know, bound leather braids. I'm looking forward to braiding ceremonies. I think that's going to be awesome. I'm going to need a lot, lot of braids. Mm. Exactly. I'm a bit sad that blood magic has been pushed down a little bit because I, I like the primal nature of it, though. Yeah. That, that's my input. I, I've not really read that much beyond. Does anyone else have anything to say? Um, yeah, um, I think my favourite one is uh, the food element. Sharing meals and stuff like that, which is um, really on an OC level because I never eat. Um, I think I've run around a bit too much at fields, but uh, I'm getting better. It's a hard life, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, I cause my own trouble. Basically, what it is, I think. I think what the new element changes have made. Not, I, th I know before I started, cat E1 had uh, some elements of priests which have now been removed, which had a much more aggressive primal element to Navarre, where they didn't talk to people. There was a bit more separation. But Navarre is not just based on fighting mm. thing. It's I think the changes have shown that actually we're more of a culture. We're more uh, ju we're more friendly than what you think. What we use the fear, we use terror, a bit cruel when we're fighting. Uh, if we're not fighting you, if you're not our enemy, your friends, we're here to help because culture is not based on just war and fighting on its own. There's always more to it because we've lost one culture. We don't want to lose another. No. 
Um, there's a question about song and story time that they do that they've been answering quite happily. Um, somebody wants to perform in song and story time. So Justin, as you you perform a lot in song and story, uh, they've asked how they can, they asked how they can perform as well. And the uh, you've got Sam um, in chat as well, and he's just saying just when they say does anybody want to sing a song or tell a story, you just put your hand up and say me. Um, Pretty much. Is it worth for someone to go along to have a chat with yourself or Gabby or Sam beforehand and say, um, I would like to... Absolutely, have a chat with whoever's running it. So, so Gabby or Gabby Sam is Sam. the best thing to do. Gabby Talking to me in character saying, I want to sing a song, you're going to get a blank look and words, well, why don't you then? <laughs> you then? I will certainly sit down with you and encourage you to sing it and I'd love to hear it because I love hearing your song. Yes. And I've got my own campfire, which you can sit and sing it to me. Yes. But as for performing in songs and stories, what no one will tell you, it helps if you're Navar, because at the end of the day, we welcome everyone at songs and stories, but it is Navar's thing. Yeah. Thing at the end of the day. If you're a brand new Navar, and you're, if you're a brand new player on the field and you've never sung before and you're a complete unknown and you step up and you're stood next to another Navar who's in exactly the same situation, chances are, if we've had a lot of non-Navar singers that evening, the Navar's going to get picked to keep things in our cultural track. And that's that's not meant in a discriminatory manner. Manner, that is one of the things that happened. But other than that, yes, throw your hand up. Because both Sam and Gabby, the who play Idwin and Sparrow, are so welcoming towards new people. They absolutely want to foster new talent on the field. Also, it really helps if you're not shit-faced. Like, genuinely, I, I know a bit of, and I hate using this word, Dutch courage certainly helps as a bona fide member from the Netherlands. I take offence to that. I think you'll find our courage is in our potatoes and our tulips. <laughs> not the alphabet. <laughs> oh, but moving swiftly on from potatoes and tulips, never in windmills. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mills. If you, to put us back to that initial scenario where you're a complete unknown and you're stood next to someone, if you're swaying back and forth and we can see what you've eaten slathered down your top, you're probably not going to be allowed into the circle. No. <laughs> cool. So, yes, beware of your alcohol intake there. Yes. Um, They're just in drinking on stream. So, I think Sam's messaged. Um, uh, the person in, in question. So everyone's saying it. Um, someone's someone's commented on uh, that they noticed that they have floodlights in Navarre. And there isn't anywhere else. Um, the, the 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 forest is very very dark, and there are pathways that are specifically lit. Um, there are. Can speak about that. Ask your elders about it. Yes, basically. Um, I think. Um, Twill is the best person probably to have a chat with yeah definitely yeah Twill is definitely but I'd like to say is um, part of a small group that actually put them up initially and did all that but key thing is that all those lights the fire pit all the improvements we can make have all come from the nation as a whole all OC yes. we've all put money to it Twill's Axes has um, it together and done the technical thing because he's really nice and a genius about that. Mm. And PD lets us store the equipment and help put it up or take it down. We love you. It's like, it lets us get off site quicker. But um, I talked to him and that's just a nation's group about improving the camp. And people want to do small things like that and put yeah. up decorations and banners and all sorts. That's really cool. Yeah, so yeah, um, Rosie K's got something like uh, for my first event two years ago at E3, the uh, lovely Night Grove Striding took my anxious self under their wing, they've become like family to me. Navarra is such a friendly and homely nation. Um, ah, fantastic wolf, uh, live for the stories. Why do we never see thorns with javelins? Because they're expensive and people tread on them. Yes, I think thrown is a is a skill that you don't that people don't tend to take. It's probably something it's that. It's a bit shit, isn't it? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, tell, um, me I'm, tell me I'm wrong. No, 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 I, I no. can't tell you wrong. Now, no. no. It'd be a one, if, if we all lived in a money vacuum, then throne would be fine. But a decent looking LARP javelin costs exactly the same as a decent looking LARP sword. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. My decent-looking LARP swords, which last two to three years of heavy use and then need to be repaired, will not last as long if I'm throwing them at people and they're being stepped on. Because those mm. carbon rod cords, they, they snap if too yeah. much weight goes on them. So, no, no thank you. That's that's why I can't be doing with Throne, and that's fundamentally why you're not seeing it. Now, don't get me wrong. There might be someone out there who's got 500 quid to turn into... 10 javelins to carry around in a linen sack who may completely revolutionize Navari warfare, but I, yeah, I'd like to see <laughs> yeah. that. I would, I would like to see, um, it's unlikely to happen. Yeah, it's, uh, the feed is pausing and buffering from time to time. Uh, Twitch has been having um, issues for the last four days. Um, I think when, Mi when Mixer shut down um everyone from mixer moved over to twitch so there's been a lot wow. more pressure put on it so there is a lot more pressure on twitch now so the so things may pause it but if there are any issues just just say and i'll, I'll do it again i'm currently scrolling my way down um i think uh so how do we ensure that it is pronounced uh uh okay <laughs> Uh, how do we ensure that it is pronounced uh, Hercinia, not Hercinia? Or Hercinia and not Hercinia? Did Dave ask that question? No. Uh, Are you sure? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> you, was yeah, it Dave, was it? Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, regional accent. Regional accent. It doesn't matter. Everyone which, knows which, what he's talking about. Which, which Dave is this? It is. <laughs> Justin, you muted yourself. Well done. Oh, was, okay. Um, yes. Okay. Right. I know the one. Okay. Educational yeah. beatings. Yes. Educational beatings. Pretty much. Um, we we um, we tell them to ignore Black Scar. I think is the best way to do that because uh, I think Black Scar get everything wrong, from what I've heard. Just you know, as a as an outsider. <laughs> <laughs> Max body found floating in Lake Anvil. Who <laughs> put all these knives in his back? <laughs> La laying on top of Black Scar, though. Just put that one out there. What, all of them? All You're of barely going to be dry if you do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, and I haven't scrolled down, so I won't see his response for like 10 minutes either. So it's all good. <laughs> um, so one of, the, uh, one of the questions was, um, how about uh, crossbows? Uh, for the Navarre archers, is that a thing? Not on yes. brief. Not on brief. No. Excellent. Go to the league. Excellent stuff. You get to have them there, or join the Grendel. They're allowed everything. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, let's keep on going. The key down. thing, if you. Go on, Chris. The key thing. <laughs> um, you got to think that Navarre at its core is practical. Is it practical for mm. me to carry this thing, which uh, is difficult to make? Uh, I've got to make really specific ammo for it. Or me and my ten mates can have a bow, and we can all shoot the same arrows together. Yes. That's without going into OC about it. And storing the plug I things. I have a crossbow. I basically never use it. Mm. So uh, also getting the string tension right. It's a completely different yeah. beast. Yeah. With the bow, it's all about, you know, making sure that the stave is strong enough. With your crossbow, yeah, more problems. It's not something you can do while out on the road. Um, so, um, Les Step has uh, said, so I've heard there's the unofficial archetype, Vine, who are the healers. I'm looking to be a physic, so is there anything key about Vines that makes them different? And then Scott has asked, can you explain the Vines as well? I am a member of the Vines, but... I'm not the best. I'm not the best authority to explain them because I'm a relatively new member. But the best way to describe it is when we were all talking earlier about the oaths. The oaths are an oath for your nation. If you're a vine, you are swearing to heal for your nation, not for your personal anger. Not for your personal. 
in personal gain. The vines support the thorns. The vines are there on the field to do the healing, and they are, they will, at some point, be our healer arch type for Rumination, and a lot of work is going towards them. They've been going for, what, over a year now? And they're excellent. Excellent. They've got their own symbol, which is a rather simple diamond tattooed somewhere on your body. They work on a buddy system, buddy system, so there's always two of you, and they're present on every skirmish and in every battle, and they run the healing blob. blob. The vines are excellent. Go ask them in the field about themselves. Go join them. They're a magnificent organization, organization, and they need your support as a new physic. That were right. Yeah, you would say that. <laughs> Sorry, I've yeah. never heard of them. Never heard of them, to be honest, but then I'm running around a lot and I not say about little things in the nation. More than, more than causing trouble for the nation. I am. Uh, no, no, with the little yeah. things. What a sick bird. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Not night magic. Harsh, Chris, not, harsh. Not, not, uh, you're not that like path not, uh, down you're floating not. in Lake Anvil. Who put all these holes in them and then stitched them flat again? <laughs> and I've got an out. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we'll, we'll move, we'll move away, move away from the vines then. So I'll, I'll say that the best thing to do with the vines would be to go up to the vines in character. Yep. There is generally, if I can remember, after the standing, they call them. Everyone goes off into their little. Yep, they meeting, have a vine so, meeting. Yeah, they have a vine meeting. There's also so. vine and cheese, which is wine and cheese, but you know, done by vines. It's awesome. I, I think I think we got that. Um, I don't think I I don't think I've ever kicked anyone out of chat before um, while on stream. Um, I think I think we might be at a first here. Wow, just wow, Justin. What can I say? So. Let's. <laughs> let, wow. Sleep alone. He's really amused himself. Let's. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, a question from uh, Non Panda um, from uh, Rachel of the uh, Brass Coast. What has been the most memorable performance at Song and Story Time for you? Open question. Who wants it? Who wants it first? Don't all rush, it's fine. <laughs> well, there were those bloody Varushkins. I don't know. Busty Strumpets. Can't remember. They were alright. <laughs> yeah. Is it have you got a favourite moment or, or I think if we if we expand it, do does anyone have like a favourite a favourite song that they like to hear around West Wall? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think that one's quite good. Gets stuck in my head and I love it. Same here. I'm I'm personally very partial to Muen. Or I, okay. Trying to think. One of probably the my favourite memories of Song and Stories is hearing Gabby, who plays Idwin Splitroot, the current voice of the nation, play form tattoo for the first one. Because I love me a bit of a dropkick Murphy's and it was just amazing to see a film for that it just came so hard out of the left field it, it was wonderful yeah wonderful. and you know everything jamie wakefield's fields ever written yes very before. very true Ethan burns i think is that the name that one's quite nice you feel -y. <clears throat> okay what about you rosemary do you have a favorite one or Something that just springs out to you when you think of Song and Story? Definitely, definitely West Wall. I don't know why, but it, it just... I don't even take the battlefield. And there's something about it that gets everybody singing at the same time. And mm. I love communal singing at LARP. Yeah. I, I think... Uh, I, mean, I, like, I like most of the stuff that Justin sings. I think, but I'm biased, being two feet uh, and that. And I, I, I don't sing or perform, but I've started to do Wayfaring Stranger with Kit. And I love to sing that. It, I can't sing, but I love to sing that. 
and it's a really really nice thing but um i think my favorite song of story time moment was um walking into the middle of song and story time with some news and everyone was joking and laughing going yeah we need to give you you need to you need to twerk for us dance for us you know if it's not good news and all of this then we'll do you in and stuff like that and then it was like and then i um i was like okay um I can't remember who it was, but it's like, uh, it was along the lines, I'll just use it for an example, and I just went, uh, yeah, um, Bessie the Bard's been murdered. And it was like, silence. I was like, yeah, see you later. <laughs> that was my, that was my favourite moment, because no one knew how to react to it. Because <laughs> saying yay would have been bad, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're ever in Wintermark, um, get to listen to, um, there's a tribute act for Bessie the Bard. Oh, oh no, it's, oh. It, it's it's only death metal. It's it's not, It's death metal on acoustic guitar. It's it's amazing. It is so good. <laughs> uh, I heartily recommend that as well. Um, Ask someone about Bessie the Bard, new people. You will hear that she is the best. She was the best bard in the empire, and truly, she was. <laughs> she was the most memorable bard in the oh, empire. God, yes. <laughs> Not good for a hangover at all. No, no, definitely not. I was one of the last people to see her alive. One of the last people to see her alive. Was it you? (laughs) No comment. No comment. (laughs) How many people died? died. How many people died for Bessie's murder sins? I think they accused they accused a lot of people, didn't they? I think. I'd have to have a chat with. I think four people got executed for it in the end, didn't they? Uh, but a lot, I a lot of them. I, 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 I can't, I can't tell his story here, but it was, it was so hilariously sad. He was literally stuck in what can best be described as he performed. Him and his mates had performed the exact set of circumstances that a bunch of murderers would have performed, purely for RP reasons. Yeah, and of course, word got around. No one was like, so is so, so so you've done these things which only murderers would do. No, 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 we did them for a legitimate reason. Yeah, no, no, no. Somebody <laughs> better <laughs> so, um, Oh, fr- have, a, have a glorious song and stories moment, which happens very rarely, so I'm sorry that I'm sorry for the new people who'll never well, who won't never, who are not likely to ever see this, but we have no heads. Having that played. Does, does, has everyone here heard We Have No Heads? Yeah. <laughs> what, what is with that song? I, I, I love no, that song no, because no, no. I, when I heard it, I thought that he'd literally just made it up. And then I learned more about it. And it's, it's easily my favorite because it just it's so it's a, so for those who don't know, We Have No Heads is an old Irish is an old Irish, Irish folk song song and it effectively has the line we have no heads we have no heads bellowed at the top of one's lungs lungs because our children are leaving let's see they came over here and they took all our land they cut off our our heads and they boiled them in oil our children are leaving because we have no heads so we drink and we and we cry and we cry and we drink and it was just so disgustingly nevar when it was bellowed out it was just like, oh god, this is us, isn't it? Oh no! And it was hilarious. <laughs> Pure comedy. <laughs> right, I need to go and get a charger, so I'm going to disappear for a second. Okay, that's fine. Um, so Fowl's asked a, um, a, a back on a more on point question. Um, how would a new Navari get involved in imperial politics or military matters? Um. Someone started. Rosemary, do you want to take it? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Talk to people. Introduce yourself. Um, have ha- have a thing to be interested in. Don't show up going, I want to get involved with imperial politics. That's a really, really wide-ranging thing. Think, you know, um, I am from Thurunin and I want to be the senator of Thurunin because X, Y, Z. Oh. Or I'm really interested in military strategy so i want to be a general that sort of thing um i am the least goals orientated larpa ever but 
even I have an IC agenda of sorts that means that I will talk to people about it whenever I get the chance. Yeah. Your senators and your generals are never too busy to talk to you. In reason. Yeah. No, this is spot on. So, if someone was involved, is um, so who were the current generals and senators in in the Navarre then? Um. None of the icy names now. Um, have I put everyone on the? Have I put you all on the spot here? You had a leaf stalker for me, Aaron. Um. Sibi Farkas for Thirunin. Yep, and Rizart. What's Rizart? Riding there. Walker. What Walker? It's still Dancewalker. Is, dance is it something dance else walker. now? Rizart Dancewalker. So those are our three. Those are our three senators. Mm. Then we have Brenos Brackenson, who is head of the Quiet General of the Quiet Step, mm -hmm. and we have Lou Tav. Is that yeah, Lou Tav, who is. Yeah. Taru, it's Welsh. Yes, Taru. Oh, Lou Taru, who is head of the, of the Black Forms. In fact, I swore both of them in, so I should really know this. Mm. You, you've done well. You've done well, Justin. I tried. <laughs> so I can it's... remember my own name, if that helps. Which character? Uh, Ooh. Sorry, I'm, I'm just going to mute. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... And that's my character's name. Excellent stuff. Um, mil military game, it's... I, I would... Uh, there's a couple of generals. Just go up to them. They are more than happy to talk. They're busy, but you want to get involved. They will always have things to do. Uh, they will always be able to point you in the right direction and things like that. So, th see, th this, is the, um, this is the question that I've been waiting for all stream. So, um, thanks, Matt, for this one. So, the Navarre and the Valorn. Discuss what's the history behind that situation. Okay, let's start how off. Long with have this. You got? So let's start. Really what, how long have we got? And I think that our resident historian is probably best to cover this because me and Chris will come out with something. I, w I will ask questions then. So let's go. Uh, also, Paul and Kay um, and um, the, the wonderful little Baba. Are probably watching. Oh, well, I watch it, and they just said we have. Uh, they're right, getting yeah. a third army, so there is scope there as well for another general. Um, Good luck in that uh, fight. That brawl is going to get messy, to say the least. Yes. Um, so the Navarre. Who who created the Valorn? Ah, that's one of those questions. It was an yeah. empire. It was called the Terran Empire, and they were very powerful magicians, and um, they were quite elitist, powerful magicians. And again, a lot of this is stuff that we're finding out in play as as the game goes along. But it looks a lot like orcs were coming in from three directions. Terran were obviously losing. Um, they were their lands covered all the empire as is now except Urizen and more territory off to the east as well. In came the orcs. Oh shit, they said, what are we going to do about that? Well, if we can't have the land, then you can't have it either. Let's cover it with a great big massive spring nuke. Um, I am not so much of an expert on the magic side of it, but they basically pumped a load of spring magic into the area, and now every Terran city is covered in a giant forest that will try to eat you. Weren't they trying to... I was under the impression they were going to, trying to cast what can only be described as an empire-wide... Um, what's it called? The wooden fastness, or the fastness of the wooden halt? Mm. Halt is essentially the wooden <laughs> fortress in the Spring Realm, which you can summon up. Because I was always under the impression that the Keystones were the focus for that, and that they did an empire-wide wide of one, because yes, we'd love it. We'd love a fortress in each of our cities. Oh no, who who moved who moved the ley line? Wait, did you chart that correctly? Oh fuck! It's certainly one <clears throat> of the things that um, has come out is you know how how much did they know what they were doing? Mm. Was anybody tricked? Were they trying to do something else? Do you know Please. what I really like? Do you know what I really like? Which I found out very recently is that the trods predate predate the Valorn, because mm -hmm. I thought the gods were created 
to destroy the law. And finding that bit out was mind blowing. Send in Audrey too. I up my, my my absolute favourite bit was when it turned out that Navarre, the person, was a slave. Anyone important in Tyrunel at all? She was a slave. Mm. I think, but yes, more about us and the Valorn. Mm. Valorn, I, carry on with us. So we summon something. I, 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 will, I, I will say as well, very yeah. quickly, uh, that um, if Kay is watching, Kay is the current is. person. Well, it might be Paul or Kay. I don't know. Hopefully, it's both of them. Um, if uh, if you want to highlight, there's a little flame in the bottom left underneath the send a message bit. You click on that, and you can highlight a message. Um, Kay is currently. Oh, no, it's just Paul. Oh. Oh. Still. But um, Kay is the advisor uh, with regards to the Valorn. So any question about the Valorn, I see Eternal Family, and there is someone in there who you need to talk to because she knows everything. Everything. I would have been say. You want history? Then Rosemary. Just go into the everyone outside the woods, aren't they? about the Valorn. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, carry on. Yeah. Okay, so, so now there is spring magic and orcs everywhere. Um, and the remnants of the Terran civilization, by which it, it looks a lot like it was underclass slaves, people who actually knew how to survive without magical stuff powering their daily lives together under the leadership of Navarre the person and went all right what are we going to do about this and as Justin said earlier they created the trods by empowering existing a lines I suppose is a good term across the empire it doing more magic such that the Navarre people and anybody else walking the trods slowly drains the magic out of the Valon again and one day we will have drained it enough that we can go in with armies or possibly some other kind of really good magical decision and finally finish another one off. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. We don't know exactly what enabled us to finish off the Miara and Valorn, but Leviathan has told us that it wasn't just an army that something, a one-off thing happened. If anybody knows more than me on that point, I'd love to hear it, because I don't. If only such a one-off thing could happen again within our lifetime. It, it would be, be awesome, such a profound it? and decisive... Um, exactly. Yeah. It wouldn't simply be ignored by the Empire or anything. It would be, I don't know. But let's not bring um, previous red. politics into, into this. <laughs> yeah. That, it's yeah. Right, fun. So, um, salt, salt for everyone. Paul, Paul has said if you want to know more, uh, I think uh, I think Paul and Gay they are accepting IC mail by the looks of it. So, uh, Paul, do you want to put yours and Gay's IC names into chat so then they can they can contact you if they if they wish to. Um, I I'd also like to say that the person who uh, the big thing that happened that create that fought off the Valon for the first time, I believe it coincided when the two feet were founded. I heard a story saying as such. <laughs> Whoever told you that is a liar. <laughs> yeah, it, was it was Navarre. It was fine. <laughs> it was some Navarre. He had some yeah, tattoos yeah. on his face, and he was yeah, wearing yeah. green. Was he? Yeah, yeah. Look, no, lots of lots of lo lots of horns. So I'm just I'm just I'm just throwing that one out and blaming John. It's fine. Um, Matt is posting a lot of links out there, Joe. So thank you uh, so much for doing that, Matt. Um, okay, let, let's get it back to uh, what the Navarra like uh, as people. Uh, so a new player has asked a question. So let's step again. I apologise for missing it, but I am coming back up. Um, how does one... This one will be for Chris, because he, he was very quiet on that one. So how does one join a striding steading? Uh, my current backstory striding... Oh, excuse me. Has a population of me and my imagination. Do people in the striding setting just say, yeah, we like you, you can join us? Um, yeah, sort of. Um, so, the whole thing, Navarre, and where you are is there's a overarching belief, which we call dance, but everyone has their place in it. 
So when everyone has a partner, there's a tempo to that dance. Mm. And we try to part of the guides is to find a place where you are. Steading or striding is formed for a purpose to accomplish something or over a certain history. But how they are led is uh, with the oaths of the brands and you choose to follow. You don't have to always follow. Yeah. If you want to join a new striding or steading, you'd like the people in a certain striding or steading, you can go and ask them and they may say a or nay and um, ask you some things. But yeah, it's sort of more like everyone should be in their right place. Everyone has a dance, their place in that. And uh, just asking and wanting to move on. It's Once you're in a striding or steading, you're not locked there. It's really mm. important. You're not forced into staying in with one group of people or one location. It's everyone accepts that you can move around and change, basically. Yeah. Um, someone's posted something into chat um, about uh, wanting to argue a point. I can't make out the name, but Rosemary, you made a point there about arguing that one <laughs> part of that. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you care to elaborate on that one? Uh, so, um, I have a copy of a document that was dredged out of the Fever Water, which is the ancient lake in Thirunin. That heavily implies that the Terran were trading with a different nation of people who really liked magic, who lived up in the mountains to the southeast of the Empire. Mm. Um, I that sounds quite a lot like the Urizen. Um, I am oh happy that. Uh, there may be some other documents that contradict this because um, plot written by different people may not necessarily be consistent, so that might be quite awkward. And I can completely believe that there are other documents, and I in fact have a Facebook message from Paul as we speak that um, says that... Uh, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Paul, Paul's telling me that... Paul is telling me that the Terran looted Urizen to steal their Ilium, saying that Urizen was not held by the Terran. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have seen oh the, my God. the I'm sorry, my ancestor stole Ilium off yours, is this okay a document in the past, not that Ileri has any Urizen problems at all. So, and um, um, Justin and Fallon oh, both no. mentioned the Sark as well. Yeah, the Terran lands went east a long way. Okay. okay. Though our ancestors weren't actually nice they at really all. They really were. They were. No. <laughs> we were, we were the 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 no wonder our empire burned. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it ourselves as well. They did basically conquer Axos with dire threats to everything they religiously believed. Oh, so, God. yeah. <laughs> Yay, free magic. Yay. So, so, so there's just something wonderful about being part of a nation that can literally say, "Yeah, we used to own the world. We may have left an awful lot of radioactive material around. We're sorry. We think." So basically, we're establishing <laughs> here. So we don't even know anymore. So we, we're establishing here. Welcome to Navarre. We're a bunch of dicks. <laughs> No, no, no. We're allegedly dicks because okay. I've burnt all the paperwork and nobody can prove it anymore. Allegedly. Allegedly. Um, our new civilization will be better than the old one. Yes. And we'll keep receipts this time. <laughs> um, I will say, when it comes to moving around, um, as well, because I'm now in my third nation, and um, it's the great thing about PD. And it's the great thing about the game, and the egregores especially, is that they really do help. They will help you uh, move around if you need to. So where, I'll just, I'll go back to it again, uh, where I was in Urizen to start off with, I was not enjoying it. I had this big idea. It wasn't going to work. It wasn't right. So Dave, who was egregore at the time, basically we had a little chat and he did say, and I was in the Navarre. And then when I moved over to Wintermark, because that's where my game moved to, um, I can't remember her name. Oh, I feel horrible now. Oh, one of the the current egregore. I can't remember her name. She's M O C. Um, yeah, I. S oh no. Um, I see name. Yeah, but basically we had a nice chat, and it was just along the lines of 
the dance has taken me is taking me in that direction. And so she's like, if your feet aren't moving, then yeah, you need to go to where they're going to stop. And it was really, really nice conversation. And then she just said, but if you um, ever get twitchy feet again and you want to start dancing, you know where your family are. And it was really, really nice. And I was just, I was almost like, I don't want to go anymore. <laughs> it was lovely conversation. So I will definitely say if when you come to going, if you want to join a group, sit down with them, have a chat with them, role play with them. That's the big, big thing. And if you get really, really stuck, come to the two feet because we took in Justin. <laughs> we, 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 were, we are, we are, we will, uh, the two feet will take, will literally sit down with everybody. They're very accepting, but every single group within the Navarre will happily talk to you. Find a guide. That's a that's the best one to do. Go and find a guide. Go and a good welcoming place is what I would definitely say it would be Bronwyn's Rest. Go and sit down and have a chat with people, because my experience. We're going to need to get more benches, aren't you, Rosemary? Yes, you are. Yeah, I, I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to need to get more benches. <laughs> Also, back to the half magic thing, the sharing food. I love it. I've been feeding people in the field since the start of the game, and now I can like feed people in the field with bonus half magic and get them to talk about their characters while I feed them. Mm. There's um, a question: Should we go for hour and a quarter so far? So, and it's up. I, I thought we were going to touch on it a lot, but we haven't touched on it at all. Navar combat. So I do apologise this race because I know you, I know you don't actually go into the field. It can still fight. Keep talking. Excellent. I like fighting. I think a mob of us show up and we circle up and hit it real hard. Is that Navari fighting? So, um, uh, yeah. what what can new players look forward to uh, when looking at Navar combat compared to other nations? Um. It's more um, rather than shield walls. You don't. We don't do shield walls. They're more mobile. Um, Wintermark don't do shield walls either. Here. You liar! Yeah, they try to. That's all we're, they, they try to. We're off. No, I. I don't. Even your, even your non-shield walls have shield walls. No. I've seen them. Mine don't. Mine don't. Thank you very much. Mine don't. Anyway, we digress. Person can't make a shield wall. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're it's more like um, skirmishing. Like most LARP fighting is of what I call heavy skirmishing anyway, where mm. people form a line. It's not necessarily shields and stuff, but the line people put on the heaviest armor they can, and they just sort of slog it out. But they're always fighting sort of as a hero, but in a line. I think from what I've seen, because I haven't fought for a year now. It's been Navarre was always there's trouble over there, we'll go and help them. Oh look, there's more trouble over there, we'll run over there and it's very really sort of more fluid and hit them in mass and, and wipe everything out and then go and rest and do it again and again and again. Mm. Justin probably knows more than I do. I the problem is I've I've been thinking about this a lot of late and my, you know when you start really thinking about something, and I've had a year to think about it now, with the longest of darks going on, and I'm not sure that my preconceptions were ever correct, if that makes sense, because mm -hmm. if I were to, if I were to describe Navarre military doctrine towards, to somebody who's never fought with us before, I'd say we are the irrevocable blow. We are the ambush from the trees. We are the spear that comes from we are the spear that comes from behind. We are the flanking force. We are that fast moving mob of shrieking kill shrieking killers that comes out of nowhere and that rolls the orcish line. In reality, we're not always that because what that was what that relies on is we're an excellent hammer to an anvil. If Highguard is holding the orcs over here, the Navarre are the people who will sliver off into the trees and appear behind them, them and shatter them. 
and shatter them. If Dawn is routing a force, it's for Navar, who will suddenly be in amongst the routing, routing orcs and using orcs, murdering people left, right, and center. But there's an awful lot of us, which can make this a bit difficult and means that on several occasions, Navarre have found themselves effectively being used as Wintermark, being used as a giant pile of bodies, bodies to throw at the enemy. But no, we're we're all about flanking, and some of the most some of the most successful moments as a battle captain have involved that. So, mm. what one of my favourite Navarre stories, which sums up our combat doctrine, is this is the first time I was tapped to captain for Navarre. We'd gone into spiral, and everyone's going a little bit mad. And the Grendel, and the Grendel, who are sort of the piratical orcs, have set up this massive block of harvest module. And Dawn comes through the gate, sees the Grendel, and plows into them and gets bogged down. Highguard stomps in afterwards, moves onto a side, and starts pushing them and gets bogged down. By this point, I wander up to our field marshal, Turf, as we've just come through the gate. And I'm looking at the horrible boggy mess that's happening in the woods, because that's where we're fighting. And I look to the right, and to the right of us, there's ferns. And these ferns are about my height, and I'm six foot six. And I look at them, and I say, Kurth, would you like us to go and take a walk through the ferns? And Kurth grabs me by the scruff, leans down, and goes, no, Kiart, and I want you to fucking murder them. <laughs> at which point, I go, yes, sir, yes, field marshal. And yell, Navar, we're going for a walk, and stride off into these man-high ferns. And these man-high ferns are pretty much the border of this fight, so we're slivering through the ferns, and groups of 10 or 12, or 12 are, being, are being peeled off from our mess and sent in to the side of the orc lines, which we're seeing opening up, until finally we've made our way all the long way along the back ferns, to which this day, if you look at those ferns, you'll see a path which we trod. We trod until we're behind the enemy force, at which point there's maybe a dozen of us and somebody asks, so should we charge them? And I'm like, no, just let them watch us. And the orc line already being besieged from multiple points at the side as Dawn and Highguard were just crushing through now that, now that the orcs were distracted, suddenly realized that there's a force stood behind them, picking their teeth and looking menacing. <laughs> and they start to re reposition together to get us, at which point Dawn and High got, got and I think the basket and the League was with us as well that day, hammer into them and absolutely roll them and suddenly there's orcs scattering everywhere, trying to make their way through mid-gate, at which point I nod and go now, and we charged them and we butchered so many of them and that, that for me sums up Navarre's fighting perfectly, we looked at a horrifying meat grinder, which we could have just thrown our shoulders behind and helped to push, but we went around it. We took the practical approach. We said, nope, attacking an enemy head on is foolish. What you should do is you should attack your enemy where he least expects it. You should attack your enemy from behind, or as Twill likes to say, if you're going to fight an enemy, make sure it's from behind, and that's if you can't catch him asleep. Catch him asleep, or unarmed. I think um, to, to add to that one, when my, my first character was a Navarre general, and we had I can't remember the other general's name, um, but he. he oh, I was, love this story. He was called Steve as well, and we had a a um, a, a great moment where basically our army, well, not the Navar, but the Empire was fighting, and there were basically it was two shield walls, and we were stood behind, and me and Steve, I think it was Kale, and we split the Navar in half, and we just went round to the side, and we stood on either flank. And we just waved at each other and then we charged behind and we just met in the middle and it was a said yeah we just annihilated everyone and that battle was over in like 10 minutes it was wonderful it was really really good and it was some of the great things that you see um it's like the complete opposite of um dawn because they're just not very good uh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, to uh, Dawn, Dawn I, are magnificent. I, 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 I will happily insult every single nation here. <laughs> so, um, it's like, like no one likes Highguard either, so it's all fine. 
But go to the marches no, for no you. No one likes Highgard. No one likes Highgard. Shut up, Scott. I've seen you. <laughs> so, um, Fowl's, asked, Fowl's asked a good question here. This is probably going to be the last, the, the last question because uh, we've been going for an hour and 25. Um, so bitter. Uh, you cannot betray your enemies. Who said it first? The Navarre or the Druge? That's a tough one. I'll, I'll, I'll open it to you both. Any ideas? I don't, think, I don't think it matters who says it because as yeah, as Sam has just said in the chat, it doesn't matter we say, say it last. last. Yeah. yeah, very, very true. That's um much better at it. Yes, I, I I've used it quite a lot. <laughs> that's not Paul Paul's just said, that's not true. High God have written loads of books saying everyone loves them. <laughs> <laughs> Got a match. Can't argue with that one, can you? <laughs> so, um, you cannot betray your enemies. Who said it first, Navarre or the Druge? Historically, the Druge, but nobody really listens to them. They always lie. We only speak the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So. And then Paula said, that's not true. Highgard have written loads of books saying everyone loves them. It's true. True. They lie a lot. They, know <laughs> they lie a lot, and I've got a bonfire. So... There we go. There we go. So, Calm um, down, Nicola. It's not that time yet. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm hoping that when I eventually get a past life vision that I find out that Mac was Nicola. That would be hilarious. <laughs> I don't think you can. They've called him back from the labyrinth once or twice, and he's just lied to them. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well. Bang goes that character goal, then. <laughs> uh, you so, me, to be honest. I don't think I can take the PR at this moment. I think it falls too much trouble as it is. <laughs> don't we all want to be a sailor instead, though? I mean, I've already caused an, ar an empire-wide argument. I think, I think anything an improvement to be honest. Speaking to which, I need to write letters to you about that because I, I've realised that you might have been right. So, no one believes me. No one ever believes me. What, but, but, what, no, what, no, we what, don't to start with. But events are proving your point. What we're, <laughs> so sa what we're saying. What we're saying. Before the next event. We're, we're, we're gonna. I'm gonna call it here. Um, if anybody has any more questions about the Navarre or anything within them. Then, um, is, is everyone here willing to take IC letters? Yeah, if, cool. If, yeah, if they like. So, um, if you want to send anyone here a message, then um, if you want, you can chuck me a message and then I can pass on contact details or you can just contact the details if you know who they are. Probably so, the best place to go is via the Navarre Facebook group. Yes, Navarre Facebook group. So, um, how do you send IC okay. letters? You won't just find us free volunteering, you'll find Everyone will happily answer your questions. Yes, there. Um, I see letters. A personal approach. Ask on the group. You can yeah. find us there. You can. It's literally you can either write them a proper letter, or and it's all in character, or you send them an email in character, something like that. So um, I've done three. They've been pointless for me. Uh, I think one of them was wet and couldn't open. Um, that was all done on purpose. One I burnt half of the page off, and. The other one, I think they received like just like two words, and that was it. So it was kind, of, it was all really, really pointless. Um, but it just made me chuckle. So um, all I would say is um, all of these chats go up onto my YouTube channel as well. So um, if you've missed it or you want to watch the one, because I think Twitch delete them after two weeks, um, so I put them all there. So if you've missed one of my early ones, they're all there as well. So and we do cover. I'm I'm working my way through so many subject matters at the moment, so um, that this has been good. We will be doing another Navarre one where we focus on uh, the virtues within the Navarre. Yay. So that we'll be doing that one as well. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. It's this has been really really good fun. Um, it's been nice to talk about my old nation again. It's brought back a lot of memories and it's been really, really nice to do. Um, thank you 
Uh, Rosemary, for jumping in um, quite late. It's been fantastic. You have been awesome. Thank you so much for doing yeah. it. Chris, Justin, yeah, you're there. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Love you too. See ya. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you both for doing it as well. I really appreciate it. I'm sure that um, I, I, I'm trying to get as many people onto these streams as possible, so you hear from as many different voices as we can. Um, so we, we we spread the wealth. So uh, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for those who have uh, followed me uh, tonight. It's been fantastic. Um, it really, really does help. Um, I think I'm about six dollars away from getting my first payout, so I can do another because um, I've done one giveaway on my channel, and when I get the payout, I'll be doing another uh, giveaway. So I've had a little box from Dark Blade, and I'll be picking something else to do as a giveaway next time round, as well. So, yeah, I'll be doing that. So all free competitions and stuff just so I give back to the wonderful LARP community that we are. Um, so I'm, I'm not getting anything out of it. This is all, everything I'm doing is going back in. So thank you so much for coming to watch and listen and chat. And it's great um, that Rihanna Lund, feel free to message people, message, um, message them and we could all go from there. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, Monday, will be the next one no I, I don't know what i'm doing i'll decide over the weekend and contact people if you're in for a surprise so thanks very much everyone take care and we'll see you all on monday bye bye